Okay, so for this question, I'm going to solve it in two ways. And I'll leave it for you to decide which way is easier. Uh, and the first way we're gonna, I'm going to solve it is using guess. Um, and then the second way I'm going to solve it is making use of this graph that they gave you. And um, here we go. So we have given to us in this question, or let me read the question. A car starts from rest and is uniformly accelerated to a speed of 30 meters per second in six seconds. Uh, what distance is traveled by the car? So we know it's uniformly accelerated. We know that it accelerates to a speed of 30 meters per second, and we know it does that in six seconds. Okay, so uh, we're given that our velocity is equal to 30 meters per second, or our final velocity, rather. Uh, we're given that the car is starting from rest. So our initial velocity, or V0, is zero. We're given that our change in time, our delta T here, is equal to six. And are we given anything else? We're given that it's uniformly accelerated. So we know A is uniform, okay, which is an assumption we make actually in most of this class. And our unknown is, well, what is our distance traveled? What is our distance traveled? Uh, in this case here, we can you know, look up you know, using our equation sheet, and we would find that the equation we need to use is distance, or, or even change in distance, if we will, is equal to Vf plus V0 divided by 2 times uh, our change in time. Okay, and this only holds when A is uniform, so uh, like, like all of our kinematics equations. Uh, and so when we substitute in, uh, we're looking for D here. We plug this in, 30 plus zero, divided by two times six. I'm realizing I forgot that six seconds. And if I add, I can add units in here just for a second. So delta D equals, well, at zero, it doesn't do anything. 30 divided by two is 15 meters per second. And we're multiplying by six seconds. When we do that, the S's will cancel and 15 times 6 is 90. Okay, and whoops, I almost forgot units. We were left with meters, 90 meters. Okay, so that was one way to solve this question. Okay. Using our guess method, uh, arriving at our equation, substituting and solving. There is another way. Um, and if you're ever given a graph, you know, I encourage you to, to try this method. And actually, you know, you could always, you know, you could have done this graph yourself, right? Um, you know that you started at zero, zero, right? Because you knew your speed or your velocity was zero at time zero, because you started from rest. And you knew that after six seconds, it was 30 because that was given to you in, in the question, right? And you knew it was uniform acceleration. So uh, if you have a uniform acceleration, your velocity time graph should look like a straight line. So you would just draw a line connecting those two points and you would end up with this graph. Um, in this case, you were given the graph, so you didn't even have to do that work. Uh, it turns out that when you have uh, velocity 
and time on the same graph, the area in between uh, the line or the curve and the time axis, this area here that I'm shading, is the distance traveled. And you know, if you, I'm going to show you right now if you don't believe me, um, because it is kind of it's kind of a strange feature. So let's go ahead and look at you know we know the area of a triangle because we form a right triangle here is one half base times height. That's just thinking back to our geometry, and so all we need to do here is find the base and the height. Well, in this question, it's you know pretty straightforward to do. The base here is six, right? It goes from zero to six. And the height here goes from 0 to 30, so the height is 30. Um, and we just plug that in, 1 half, 6 times 30. And if we multiply that all out, 1 half times 6 is 3. 3 times 30 is 90. And, you know, if we wanted units in here, well, our y-axis is in meters per second, and our x-axis is in seconds. So if we added those in, you know, we would actually even end up with our 90 meters. And I'm done. Okay, so that's two ways of doing this. Okay, that, you know, no matter what is graphed here, the area um, between the curve and the time axis on a velocity time graph is distance. And you might remember that on a velocity time graph, if you watched my other video, that the, the steepness of the line or the slope of the curve, or sorry, the steepness of the curve or the slope of the line is acceleration, right? That slope is acceleration. So if we wanted to know the acceleration, we, we could actually do that. And I can kind of just do this visually here, you know, it goes every two seconds it goes uh up in velocity by 10 meters per second so you know that would be 10 over 2 in other words the acceleration you know 10 meters per second every two seconds in other words the acceleration is 5 meters uh, per second squared again if you don't believe me check using your equations, right? You can actually, now that you have final velocity, initial velocity, time, and distance, you can use another one of your equations, a different one, to solve for acceleration and check that you get this answer five. Uh, and, you, and you will see that you do. So two ways uh, of solving these physics questions. Uh, we can do so graphically, or we can do it with, um, with our equations and with math. So uh, which method's easier, you know, is going to depend on you, which one you like more. And it's also going to depend on the question. When you have this nice graph here, um, there's really no reason not to use it. Um, so uh, just something to think about and something to try in, uh, in some of these practice questions.